As soon as Leo started talking, I just rolled my eyes. Because you want somebody who's not with you for your money, but that's all you talk about. Hey, beautiful people. How you are doing today? It's your girl, Destiny here. And welcome to my channel. How you are doing? Hope you guys are doing great. So, today's video, we want to talk about the new season of Love is Blind on Netflix Season 7. See, guys, if you've not watched the show, this is going to be a spoiler. So, please, if you don't want the show being spoiled for you to a large extent, don't watch. Like, this video is not for you. But if you watch the show and you want to hear the conversation around the show, what do you think about this season of Love is Blind? This is one show that I've always enjoyed, I've always loved, and I always watch it, honestly. See, as much as I come here, I will talk about the relationship. I know that I am very, I like seeing the dynamic and the psychology that goes on into Love is Blind. And a couple of seasons back has been really, really terrible with very toxic traits in people. So the new season is out and they have some amazing couple now on the show. And the entire process from the pod, now a honeymoon, super excited. They have like six episode now so if you haven't watched yet i know it's weekend so you guys might actually be watching it now so come join in the conversation so in this video we're going to hear people's thoughts on love is blind and i'm going to share my thought on love is blind and the couple and also we're going to have a prediction of the couple we think are going to stay married at the end of the show so with that all said, guys, let's go hear people's thoughts on Love is Blind generally, on the couple, on the show, everything. And also, I want to know what you think about the show, the couple, and some of the things you saw on the show that maybe we're missing. Go on and speak on it, okay? Anyway, guys, let's go check it out, and then we'll come back and talk more. So Love is Blind Season 7 has commenced, and right off the bat, the comparison is playing out. We have here Hannah who is very interested in Nick D. Now they were sharing who's their celebrity crush. He said, my celebrity crush, well my old one specifically, is Beyonce. But now I'm very interested in Scarlett Johansson. She responded by saying, you know what, I like Henry Cavill. And girl, I don't blame you. He said, Henry Cavill, <laughs> I'm the less buff version of him. You guys, this is Nick D, a.k.a. Henry Cavill, the less buff version of him. Basically his twin. And you know the thing is, it's giving me season six, Chelsea, who compared herself with Megan Fox. Exactly. You know what? He kind of looks like Henry. You know, I'm just joking. Listen, my advice to anybody who's entering in a show like this or Love is Blind, because I have been doing this for a hot minute, do not compare yourself to any celebrities or famous people. Oh. Let the viewers do that for you. Because I'm noticing this growing habit on Love is Blind where contestants are cheating by comparing themselves with celebrities. And we all know why they do that. But the problem is... When the comparison is so off, you're just inviting a roasting session. So Love is Blind Season 7 is out, and this show will always be crazy to me because getting engaged to somebody before you know what they look like is really insane. My love is not blind. My love is peripheral. As soon as Leo started talking, I just rolled my eyes because you want somebody who's not with you for your money, but that's all you talk about. I'm a famous art dealer. I'm financially well off. I went to private school. Like, we know. We get it. And Brittany thinks she's slick. As soon as she found out about him having money and being well off, she started bringing up the 50-50 conversation. And Britney is hilarious to me. Talk about she only get with athletes and rock stars and that she a trophy wife. So why are you on Netflix's Love is Blind if you such a trophy? It's giving certificate. And somebody needs to do a thorough investigation of Leo's family's death because how the whole family die of cancer and the way you talking about it is like cancer is your favorite zodiac sign. You don't even seem sad. It's low-key giving you may have done something to your family to get this money, but it's also giving that Britney feel like you gonna inherit the cancer and she gonna inherit your money. But the part that got me was when they got engaged and they seen each other for the first time and he had so much great things to say about Britney and she couldn't even figure out one thing to say. But I don't even know how you let him manipulate you into even wanting to get married, Britney. You was leftovers. He didn't want you. He wanted Hannah. Like you was just reading a letter that your relationship was tainted and then five minutes later you're saying I do to a proposal. You're saying I do to that bank account and them shopping sprees. You're not sleep. And watching Leo be cringy and watch him gaslight Hannah because she chose to go with somebody else because you was taking too long with your decision is crazy. And then tried to play Hannah the next morning like you wasn't ready to give your big toe, your right shoulder, and your left ear just for her to pick you over Nick D. Leo was bull, tomato, tomato. And the fact that y'all spent so much time on this couple but didn't pick them as one of the six to focus on is weird. They end up going on their own trip and breaking up, but we didn't even get to see it. I honestly don't care who don't work out on this show as long as Ashley and Tyler make it through. They are my number one. Yeah. I love them. The chemistry, the way they communicate, the matching shoes, and the way that he almost passed out when he seen her the first time made me smile. It was giving Brett and Tiffany. 
I also yeah. like Marissa and Ramsey's, but they got to show me a little more because all they do is have sex. Like, she loved getting rammed by Ramsey's. <laughs> but also, she's a little strange to me. The whole cancer Leo Leo, like, she cracked the code. It's crazy. And also, her dating a Trump supporter for three years does not sit right with me. I also want Ramsey's to cut these two double dust jump ropes off the side of his head. I hate those. <laughs> And I also liked seeing Marissa with Bowden, but I heard that he got some allegations on him, so she dodged a bullet. Now, these two couples are a great example of it was great in the pods, but now that we're outside, it's going downhill. I really enjoy Alex and Tim in the pods. Once they got outside, they got on my nerves. Like, in the pods, they seemed connected. He was very open with her about his family and his sisters passing away, and she was weeping every day on that couch. Like, Mary, don't you weep. Now, I may be the only one that feel like this, but I feel like him giving her the dead sister's bracelet was a little bit too much. Like, it's too soon. But the first red flag I seen was when he didn't get down again and propose on his knees. Like, do you got bad knees or something? Get down. But the more and more that they hung out, the more you could see that they were not compatible at all. She was irritated by him. Everything that he did, she low-key didn't like. And we could see that in real time. But I feel like she's a little mean. Like, that whole dog situation is not that serious. And then Love is Blind pissed me off again because how didn't y'all catch the argument between these two? It must have been bad. Tim was over it. You can see it all over his face. The fact that she covered his mouth and called him out of his name, he was not going for it. And I'm just assuming, but maybe Alex is used to talking to men crazy like that because Tim said, I'm at peace and I don't argue. And she said that I used to have anger issues. So I'm like, maybe you used to just talking reckless for real. And he is not going for it and I don't blame him, but they just not compatible. That's just what it is. Nick and Hannah is another one. First of all, she's Chelsea number two from last season. She's so insecure. I knew they was going to have problems because they both thought the other one looked like something else. Nick thought he was about to get Christina Aguilera, and she thought she was about to get Channing Tatum. But also, if I remember correctly, Nick said he was the punter on the football team. He never said he was the quarterback or the running back. All he does is kick the ball, so he don't have to be too buff. You acting like you still a high school cheerleader, and you're really the quarterback. But besides that point, she's so insufferable. Like, why are you mad that he's riding ducks? Like, duck, duck, goose. Like, yes, I feel like Nick should have said something to the lady, but she was also 60 years old. Are you really that jealous? Please. He wouldn't have to go play with somebody else if you would have just went over there and played with him, but instead you wanted to judge him and write down a grocery list of things that you don't like about him. And then unless producers had cut it out, she lied about what the older lady had said. She didn't call you a B at all. The one word that really pissed him off was delusional. He was like, what you call me? Delulu? He was pissed. But yeah, they can hang it up flat screen too because it's not going to work. Steven being so happy about his 0.3% blackness has me in tears. I can look at you and see some type of black in you. But he's ba da ba 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 loving it for real. Like get the dashikis ready for Black History Month because he wants one. Bad. But did Steven really call Monica a mutt and she said, yes, I'm a mutt? Like are we really serious right now on national TV? What the hell? But even when he said he holds the title of being a cheater and she said, I'm so sorry. Like what are you sorry for? He's the cheater. Like you have all these things to be mad for, but you want to be mad that he talked too much. But when it's time for you to talk, all you're doing is smacking on them chips. Please. I said I was gonna root for everybody black, but y'all are giving me a root canal. Like the square root of zero is zero. Y'all getting zero support from me. I'm sorry. And I could really care less about Taylor and Garrett. He heard ethnicity and thought that she was black and was ready to hit a Uno reverse. He don't want none of that. Like Taylor told him that she wasn't white and he started calling her calculated. Like, what are you really trying to say here? And he did not deserve them letters from your grandparents. They are turning over in their grave. Please. Like I said in the beginning, I'm rooting for Ashley and Tyler. That's about it. The weird part about Love is Blind is there is someone on every season who you cannot stand, who makes your stomach turn every time they're on the screen. And while they're in the pods, you're sitting there cheering to the Lord above that this person who you would never want to be in a room with will find the love of their life and get engaged so that you can watch more of them being horrible. You can't stand them, but you're like, please find love. I need to see what you're like when you share a hotel room with someone else, please. I give Brittany a lot of credit because while she may be a self-proclaimed trophy wife, she is authentic as possible, right from the jump. And I think that's how everyone should be. Like if you're the aspiring trophy wife who wants to get her hair and nails done and go to Pilates all day and uh, not do 50-50, then Hell yeah, be that girl from the start. I love that she just got right down to business and asked everybody, she's like, how are we gonna split bills? Because you know who didn't do that? Stacy in season five. And it wasn't until like episode eight when she finally asked that question about like, who pays when we go to dinner? And Izzy was like, we split it. And she was mortified. Stacy could have saved herself a lot of trouble if she just got down to brass tacks immediately from the start. And I also give credit to the guys who were like, yeah, I am a 50-50 person because they were being upfront from the start too. Cause it's really annoying when someone tries to modify part of themselves in order to win you over. 
Because if that's not who they really are, it's not going to be sustainable and the real them is going to come out eventually. And I'm sure there are some of those 50-50 guys who maybe she didn't ask that to who would have been super annoyed later had they gotten together. I like her style. I like how upfront she is. When you know what you want and are crystal clear, just be about it. There's no need to like try to make yourself as amenable to every possible person out there because that means it's going to be harder to find someone you're actually compatible with. I know you had me in the first half, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, oh, she seems sweet, she seems mature. And then I heard that you left your job to find a husband at your small age of 26. Mm -hmm. Hannah, let me hold your hand when I say this. You should be in the club. Like, baby girl, what is you doing? Like, you should be in the club. You should be popping bottles. You should be shaking booty. Get out of the pods and go put a poster girl dress on. I could find you about 10 nicks in freaking southern Minnesota, all right? They will be there when you get back, okay? Um, Leo Menendez, <laughs> you scare me. <laughs> How convenient that your entire family has finished. from cancer, you say? Exactly. Very unclockable. Oh. Very unclockable. It just so happened that you inherited clearly a multi million dollar company. So that you then came on Love is Blind? Hmm. Uh -huh. hmm. How everybody had cancer, even your stepdad? <laughs> Suspect. Do you have cancer? Doesn't look like it. Mm -mm. If anybody has information on this man, send it my way. Ex-girlfriends, ex-employees, ex-classmates. I have to know more information. <laughs> There's no way mm -hmm. he's sane. Um, yeah, I changed my mind. This guy, he's definitely the villain. He's definitely going to be a villain in Love is Blind Steven, Season 7. Steven says it 7. His name's Steven. Now, I really should have known based off of his description alone. I don't know much about cancer men, so put it in the comments if you do. So there are a couple of minor red flags that jump out, but I reserve the right to be wrong. First of all, he hasn't been able to make it work past the two-year mark, mainly because he understands his worth. I also find it confusing when a guy says his type is um, a woman who wants him but doesn't need him. But mainly it's in this preview how he articulated the fact that he's cheated and then been cheated on multiple times as well. But the way he's describing it, it sounds like he's using therapy talk to kind of manipulate. And he's like, I basically cheated because I believed I didn't deserve her. A lot of people think cheating is for a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I slid into the girl's DMs and we were flirting with intention. And then basically he also goes on to say that he was doing this because he knew that he would get caught. And I just feel like that is a jumping red flag. So he's my pick and I reserve the right to be wrong. Hannah from Love is Blind season seven is the new Chelsea. Her behavior is getting on my nerves and it is making me so angry that producers are continuing to allow, first of all, 20 something year olds to go on the show because they are not ready to get married. Mm -hmm. And second of all, allowing people to discuss their appearance. Because that completely defeats the entire purpose of the show. Exactly. Hannah's very slick because she did what Chelsea did. She didn't just like come out and say that she is conventionally attractive. She just keeps talking about the fact that she used to be a cheerleader, that she dated the quarterback of the football team in high school, which obviously insinuates that she is attractive. And I feel that it is because of these discussions that she is forming superficial bonds with both Leo, the art dealer, and this guy, Nick. And I think at one point she even realizes that she has like hooked these guys based off of this belief that she is attractive. And then she starts to get really insecure about it and start to backpedal and almost feel guilty about insinuating that she is conventionally attractive. And like, don't get me wrong, she is a very, very pretty girl. She has now just put a ton of pressure on herself because she's kind of made herself out to be this picture perfect person. Anyway, those are just my opinions on Hannah for the time being, but I have a feeling that things are going to get really, really messy really, really soon. Mm -hmm. This is Monica. This obvious Caucasian man is Steven. Monica's mother is biracial. Her father is fully black. 
Monica tells Stephen that when she was younger, she didn't know what to fill out on the papers. She was confused about her racial identity. Stephen has told Monica before this that he is basically West African. And when Monica relates her story to Stephen, Stephen calls Monica a mutt on national television. And you know what Monica does? Monica goes, yeah, I'm a mutt. <laughs> and when that happened, um, I turned my TV off. And I'm not sure if I'm going to participate in the rest of this foolishness. <laughs> I, I, I just watched and heard that with my own eyes and ears. And I, I'm, I'm just, I'm lost. You know what? I, I most likely am going to participate in the rest of this foolishness. If you are 25 and below and you are ever in a room with some older women and they are trying to tell you don't go with that man. He's a walking, talking red flag. He will flirt with every woman that walks by. You do not want him. He is slick with the tongue. He will know how to manipulate you and let you think these things while he's off doing other things. If they are all telling you don't go for this man and he is a red flag, listen. Mm -hmm. Hannah, how are you mad that Nick can't be trusted? Literally all the girls, every single girl in that room. Every single one of them told you, do not pick Nick. Not that Leo was a better option now that we saw his little outburst. But they told you, do not pick Nick. He is a player. He is a ladies man. He will flirt with every woman that walks by. So while you're on your little moon and then he over there hopping on the duck with another woman. And then you see them kind of chatting it up at the end. I think the woman was harmless. But like, you know, it's the principle of the thing what it looked like. And she's like, oh, he can't be trusted. Now you sitting on this couch like, oh, I can't trust him. Oh, Nick, girl, save it. Set next time, next time. When all the older women in the room who have been through a little bit of life mm -hmm. tell you something about a man, listen. I know I'm going to get a ton of hate for saying this about Steven from this season of Love is Blind but he gives me major, major ick. There is just something about him, and I don't know what it is with Stevens, because Love is Blind UK also had a Steven who I was not especially fond of, but when this man and Monica had their first reveal, I just found it so strange and creepy how like he almost ate her entire face off. I don't know, but there was a part of me that felt like she kind of wanted a little bit more room to breathe and to process and to see him, and he just was all over her. And we cannot forget this absolutely painful scene from Mexico. This is sort of... I love you. To death. I'm obsessed with you. I might be you. chatty again. Literally cannot get a word in. I'm so sorry. I'm obsessed with you, but like, Jesus Christ. Like, you can just tell that she is going to get sick and tired of this man so quickly because he is just so over the top. He is just too much. And a part of me is like, is he too much because he is like overcompensating for something? Also, a part of me feels bad for saying these things about him because like, he does seem to be a nice guy. I don't know. I'm just so torn. What do you guys think? Steven is a Nigerian representation on Love is Blind this season. Y'all know Netflix love to give us Nigerian men to come in and stir up the pot, girl. There is so much black love this season, including Steven, you know? It took him a lot to get there, but Steven told Monica, you know, I did vote for Trump back in the day. But then I realized I thought I was white this whole time when in actuality, I got like a Pythagorean theme of black in me. Y'all think Steven can make a mean bowl of jollof rice? Let me know. Come to think of it, Nick kind of do look like Travis Kelsey right here. Wait, 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 let me show you. Now, if you look at this real quick, that could be Nick. Just a little bit. He's not as fine as Travis Kelsey, but it could be. Okay, Nick, you get a pat. But the Henry Cavill comment, diabolical. I don't mind him. I think that he's a cute man. I just feel like he's using his trauma to bond with her and is giving a little bit force. But I do like him. Mm -hmm. Ramses, Ramsey, Ramses is fine as hell. Ramses reminds me of a guy who I used to talk to in DC. Funny enough, I was like Marissa and I was like, I don't think Will Ferrell's funny. And it ruined things. But on to the next. Which, thinking about it, they might be related because they kind of look like two. But anyways, I love that he's talking about mm -hmm. gender expression, gender roles, masculinity, and how that is so personalized to him and it varies from person to person. And she's appreciative of that. But I was also like, Marissa, girl, you want to stay at home wife? I mean, husband? Like, what? Tyler is probably one of my favorite male contestants on Love is Blind, yeah. like, in history. He is so fine, so attractive. And the way that he speaks and loves on Ashley is just so beautiful. Like, their love story is probably my favorite of the season. Like, 
<sighs> Tyler. <sighs> I like Garrett. He's a little weird, nerdy, interesting. Like his personality, I don't think it would mesh well with me, but I think he's like attractive and he's cool. And I like him with Taylor. Taylor is so stunning. She is like absolutely gorgeous her instagram name was like chinese disco kitty or something like that and i was like girl what steven this picture does you know justice but i really like steven and monica together like he seems so into her and i love that for black women because i just feel like the man should be like more into you and like really really expressive of how much they like you yeah. but she seems she talks like she really likes him but her physical attributes doesn't give that she's that into him but she talks like she really likes him and the whole cheating thing, I think y'all are gassing it because that man said that he went to therapy for it and is still actively in therapy and values emotional intelligence and all those things in conversation. So I think that's so admirable and honest. And like Steven is, I got some electrical wires that he can reroute. <laughs> no shade to Ashley because Ty, me and Tyler, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I really like them together. Let me just y'all think about the guys of uh, the show, the black men, the black love on this season is just so beautiful to see. Like I'm enjoying it. It seems a little bit more positive this season and that's something I really, really can appreciate and love. Let me know what y'all think about this, okay? Love you, bye. Please go down in the comment section and share your thoughts. Love to know what you think about this um, season of Love is Blind. What are your thoughts? Who are your favorite couple? What do you think about all the couples of this season? And just go ahead and share your thoughts. Love to know your own take on this. But as always, keep it respectful. You're on this channel. We're allowed to disagree, but we'll do it in a respectful way. So go ahead, feel free, and share your thoughts, okay? So for me, I'm just going... A lot of them have said some of the things I want to say, but I really want to say, like... The Love is Blind, I feel like the way the season is going, the way, the, because it's one of the biggest shows on Netflix, the way it's going is that I feel like um, production should cut out anybody that is trying to give away the way they look or how they might be structured. I feel like it should be taken away. Like those people, they should just cut them out and like, you know, more rap. That should be one of their contracts. Like nothing should describe you physically on how you look because the idea of the show is love is blind so the person is not supposed to have an idea of what you look like so those ones that is giving oh what they do share leader like um what's her name um what's her name again nikki and uh, hannah okay nikki and hannah when i see people do that for me i'm just like okay you're here for the wrong reasons but can we talk about uh, how like it's almost a pattern of the women on love is blind is almost like they act so desperate on the show that they are more the women in the show are more concerned of really being the authentic self but to be perceived a certain way by the men i get it women that go for this show are women that wants to be in a relationship and a marriage i know that but I would really like to see where there is cast of women that know who they are, what they are, but they know they want a partner. You guys know, like, our type of women, you get it, women that knows who they are, what they are, they've done the work and all that, and there's a less insecurity, less desperation, because that's some of the things I saw in some of the contestants of this, or will I say of Love is Blind, generally, even the UK one, there was a lot of desperation to have a man. And for me, it didn't sit well with me. So let's go to the favorite. Okay, let's just talk. Um, Brittany and Leo, I'm not even going to talk too much on some of these couples. Like Brittany and Leo, clearly from the get go, from the jump, you can tell she it was not physically attracted to him. Immediately she saw him, she was just like, okay. I think in her head she was expecting a bologna with a handsome look. <laughs> I'm not saying, don't get me long, wrong, I'm not saying Leo is not, but Leo is not your conventional, attractive, white male. So I feel like in her head, she was expecting Leo to be that very attractive, white male and also with money. So I, I feel like for her, her love is not blind. I love what she, she's very concerned about if she's attractive to the person physically. And Leo is not a type and it shows. And she didn't hide it. And I don't even know why they even tried because she didn't even hide it because she doesn't even, she didn't say, I love you to, to Leo. She didn't say, um, anything when, even when he was asking that, Oh, what, what are the things you like? She, she was like, Oh, I cannot. I like it, everything is overwhelming with too much pressure. She didn't let anything in, but I feel like she was still going with the flow with the idea that Leo had money. And I feel like Leo was trying to sell himself like he has, it comes from wealth so that to attract women, to keep women with him. I feel like that is his selling point, how he is able to keep women is with money. 
And I feel like this type of men will want to control you with their money because that's the only thing they feel like they have over you. So, yeah, I guess they are not together. And production, one of the reasons why production didn't add them to the cast or the fact that they were the one couple where it, it didn't look like it was mutual and she never said she loves him. The only reason why they gave us so much, gave them so much airtime was the fact that their story was connected to Anna and Nick's story. So they felt like there's no way they could tell the story without those two people's story. But I just feel like they got a lot of screen time, personally. Let's talk about Marisa and Ramis. I like, love this couple. This couple, they give me um, good vibe. And I feel like this is a couple that is a very, very self aware of who they are. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the vibe I get of them. I feel like they are very, very uh, intentional about their relationship, what they want, and all that. And I'm rooting for them. Like, I'm not getting any type of red flag or any like side eye thing about them. But yeah, I, I, they are very, very touchy with each other. They are grown. And yeah, I'm happy for them. Like, yeah. I like them. I like them. And I feel like they are both mature. So, yeah. Um, Alice and Tim. Clearly, clearly, like, from the get-go, immediately, Tim was talking about his family, his sisters dying and all that and all that. I'm not saying that when it comes to show like this, you don't share and you don't become vulnerable. For me, seeing a man being vulnerable is one of the most hottest thing ever. So, at first, I was like, okay, it's good. But I feel like that is one way he's able to trauma bond with people or with a woman. I feel like when if a woman is trapped with those story, he that's where he just keeps telling. So I feel like that's one thing you use to um, hold Alex on. And Alex, I feel like when nearly Alex, they got together, they went to Mexico, Alex was just realizing that Asef and this guy, especially when it comes to the things they like, they were really, really different from fashion to the things they like. The way they talk, the way they communicate, she found her like, uh, I don't think they think he's thinking, okay? So, yeah, I don't know, like, I feel like, I don't know, I don't know, I just feel like it was too early, just day one at the honeymoon, they were already fighting, sleeping in separate rooms. For me, this is what, who, who knows, who knows, I wish them the, well, I w hope they, they uh, skate through whatever they're going through, but yeah. Their own is like this. I feel okay. Let me go back. Like I feel like, and okay. Let me finish. <laughs> let me finish. Okay. We've all we we've all predicted the couple that's going to stay married at the end of the show. So let's move on. Monica and Steven. Steven is so hilarious. The fact that is from West Africa. So for Steven, I feel like Steven is super excited that he's with a black woman. I feel like Steven is. I feel like he's overcompensating for something which I've not been able to put my hands on. Could it be that he's like he has a thing for black women and that's why? But there's something about Steven that my finger can really. But he seems like a nice guy. He seems like he's treating the black queen pretty well that he's so into her, which I love. I like it when a man is so into you. But definitely when they get into the real world, we're going to see more of who he is. And what he is and i feel like he's one of those white men or white people that so want to be black so badly so yeah so yeah that's steven and monica and i feel like monica monica is a very mature um woman and she she knows exactly what she wants she's going to communicate it effectively and all that so i really like her i like the way she carries herself i like like she's not like she stands then to sometimes to some of the things she strongly believes in and she speaks up her mind so i like that about her but yeah we're going to see what's going to happen about this but i feel like he's more into her than she's into him and for me that's a good thing yeah anna and nick i feel like this couple they're just wasting our time the screen time i feel like they're just wasting it these two people, first of all, they are so young. This is another thing I feel like Netflix. Netflix should not be casting anybody below 29, 30 and above. I feel like it should be 30 and above. Because I feel like, what, do, what is Anna 26 coming to do at Love is Blind? Like, 
you have so much in your life and that's one thing i'm not saying that oh get married don't get married but the thing is that when you're young you don't even know who you are her frontal love just started developing and she left her job to come and look for love for me like <clears throat> i feel like anna has a lot of insecurity and i feel like these are some of the things maybe netflix know what they're doing when they're casting but these are some of the things the producers of the show should be able to pick on on somebody that has insecurity somebody that is confident and i feel like anna has a lot of insecurity and she's young and i understand she's going to grow she's going to know herself and learn from a lot of things but she owes a lot of insecurity around her she she doesn't trust herself she she doesn't even know what she wants she, she all she knows is that she wants a man she doesn't know what she wants she doesn't know how she, she can't even process her emotions and her feeling and she still allow people to get into her ear and like she's in very very she's all over the place and i feel like she's not even ready for a relationship then talk less of being engaged and being married as for nick nick is so insecure he's one of the guys that on the show that is insecurity ooze around that you can smell it for miles away and i feel like that's what most of the lady was speaking on so on the pod it was having it was giving a persona like he's a he's a player and all that and sometimes honestly a lot of these men that plays that come off as player comes from a place of insecurity because they feel and they know that they are not enough so they want to like play multiple women at the same time to make them feel like the man so nick that's the vibe nick is giving me actually and tyler this is my favorite couple of the show i love them love 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 love, love, love them i like i really hope them i love tyler tyler is so mature actually so much for me i just feel like this is just that couple this is just that couple for this season and i'm so rooting for them love the way he talks to i they communicate i generally i just love the entire relationship the only thing that gives side eye which is just a personal reference is how very religious he is but um ashley too is religious that's a, um that's done an uh ali and i always advise people that if you want to get into a relationship with someone always go with somebody that has the same core value vision as you are and that would really reduce a lot of conflict and a lot of disagreement in the relationship so i'm rooting for them now i don't even have anything like to say about their own relationship love 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 it taylor and gary these two um i love i love taylor she's amazing she like i really like her as a person but them as a couple i don't know like i feel like they are one of those awkward couples but they might work together really well they look kind of awkward together but i feel like they will work really well together loki like that those couple you see and you're like oh what are they doing together but loki they they have a good vibe within themselves like so that's the vibe i'm getting of the two of them i feel like he's very into her but sometimes maybe insecurity will play out but let me know what you think about all this couple your own thoughts about them the entire show generally and what you think and let's have a prediction what couple do you think will make it to the altar and what couple you think will stay married okay so for me definitely ashley and tyler finger cross are going to stay married um anna and nick know if they do it's going to be toxic as hell um monica and steven Mm, is a maybe for me i'm still on the fence on it ashley and tim maybe for me not a really strong fan of both of them together but no i feel like tim is like low-key red flag i don't know like i get it the fact that i was giving a lot of sentimental things away to ashley i know they say when you know you know but that just makes me give it more side eye so i'm still on the fence on it um marisa and rams love them definitely they're going to get married ah! and okay that's it anyway guys please go down in the comment section and share your thoughts love to know what you think about this amazing story this show down in the comment section but as always keep it respectful you're on this channel we're allowed to disagree but we do it in a respectful way so go ahead feel free and share your thoughts share this video with somebody that you want to be part of the conversation because that's what we do here we have banging conversation so go on and share this video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up smash the like button because this helps youtube to push out my content for more people to see and that'll be you supporting this channel and this girl here so go on and do that 
subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you guys in my next video deuces